Hey, it's Elizabeth Marie, and you're watching O Face Wrestling. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on O Face Wrestling. This is your host, JT, and today I am joined by Elizabeth Marie. So thanks for joining us today, Elizabeth. Thanks, I'm excited to be here. And I'm excited to have you on the show. <laughs> you got a nice little cameo back there. What up, buddy? What's his name? Uh, her name is Aurora. Oh, her name. When I first got her, I was trying to do with sleep. So now she's up my ass. We can't get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, that, that reminds me. On my interview, I did like probably like about a year ago. Um, the girl had her dog with her all the time. He was actually like in her face most of the episode. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a love bug. All right, so I'm I'm really excited to learn about you because I know when you sent me some of your promotional pictures, you had like um, a purge kind of character, like kind of like a look, and I'm really interested to learn about that. So tell me what inspired your character and your like attire and all that. Oh man, okay, so um, pretty much like I was pretty much grandfathered into the wrestling business. So, like, I took over uh, after my dad retired. My, ta my dad had been wrestling for, like, 14 years. And um, it was kind of like an inside joke uh, with me and my friends because my friends used to say, like, if the purge ever happened, like, I'd be the first one to go and take out a hit list. Like, because I was just really, really crazy. And I love, like, my own blood freaks me out. But when I see blood from other people, like, I love it. Like, I'm so into, like, you know, horror movies is my thing, like, CSI shit like that. So, as far as my gimmick goes, um, I kind of came up with the idea because there's, it's very rare that you see characters, per se, in wrestling that take up uh, a gimmick where they're just, like, very consistent, crazy. Like, like in WWE, the only person I've seen, of course, has been... Um, Nikki Cross is one of them, and uh, you know Bray Wyatt. A lot used to talk about Sister Abigail, and you know like Rosemary. So a lot of my inspiration came from them, but I also kind of wanted to make it a twist of my own. Um, so pretty much, I um, took uh, one of the scenes from the first Purge movie where they're driving in the car or whatever. And they get out with guns and they're covered in blood. So I pretty much incorporated that into into my gear. So um, like I come out covered in blood. I've got blood dripping from my mouth. Like just pretty much like I just did my own massacre and like loved it and had so much fun. So um, it's definitely I've not debuted it yet because I definitely when I first started, you know, it was kind of like I was still trying to define. Um, how I wanted to portray my character as far as wrestling goes. Like, what, what do I keep, what do I want the fans to be of who I am? Like, my, my character, you know, my personality. Like, how is that going to be portrayed in the ring? So I definitely took a lot of time and hours and, and lots of paper and hands and just kind of throwing out brainstorming ideas of how I want people to look at me. Um, so... I'm, I'm a big girl uh, as well, and a lot of the people that I've wrestled sort have of normally been smaller than me. So I also took that into accountability, like maybe I could run with uh, along the lines of, you know, being just a crazy-ass psychotic, psychotic sister type deal. Like, you know, I have, um, I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> like, I don't really need to be doing that, but I can be with somebody even talking to myself. So... I kind of use that to my ability and put it into my work uh, as a worker in, in, in the line of wrestling. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, pretty much, like I said, I love horror movies. I've always wanted to be in one. Like, I, I love, like, blood to me, just like, I don't know. It, it amazes me at all, like, all this shit, you know, that can happen that comes, in, comes into play with, like, being involved with blood. So, like, um, yeah, I just kind of was just like, you know, writing, brainstorming, doing a lot of, well, I wonder how I can portray a lot of this when it comes uh, to my wrestling. Sorry, I don't know if I cut out there. I got a phone call. I know you um, <laughs> uh, A lot of it, basically, because I've been through a lot, you know, as a kid. I lost my mom back in 16, so that, you know, 
a lot had to do with how I want to be portrayed in the ring because my ultimate goal was, you know, if I'm doing this, I want to make my mom proud. But how can I do it in a sense that it's never been seen before in, in, in the indie scene? Because, you know, you see you see all types of shit, but as, as I go through and work at different shows and, and go and be fans at certain shows, there's just a lot of characters that I've, that I've not seen. And, and especially with women's wrestling, because women's wrestling is just not getting to where it's so big and, and so broad. And that's one thing I have yet to see is someone do something based off like the purge. I mean, that's the first. So like, I really like the idea and I came up with it on my own. So I'm very proud of that. Like, I had no help coming up with that. So that was definitely very something I was very, very proud of. And um, as far as uh, my gear, so pretty much I'm in the process of getting custom gear made to go off of this gimmick. And Pretty much my idea as far as my gear goes is to pretty much have my gear look like fresh blood. So blood splatter being involved, have fresh blood, but also it's material that is, if I do cover myself in blood, you know, it's not going to have no effects on my gear. So I'm very excited. I'm working with a couple different artists um, and to see how well it plays out. So I'm very excited for that to come into play and see how that's going to look for my debut in April. And I'm really excited to see that because, like you said, you know, a few minutes ago, you really don't see those type of characters in wrestling, at least not anymore. Like, I know it was a little bit more popular in the 90s and stuff like that. But nowadays, you know, you just like you just don't see it, unfortunately. And I don't know if it's because people are afraid to portray like a character like that or if it's just kind of not their thing or something like that but the one thing that I really like about you know the reason why you did it you mentioned how you are really big in horror movies you're taking something that you love and incorporating it into your character and I think that's really um that's really dope because obviously you're going to be really into it and you're going to really care about it and stuff like that because just like you I don't like my own blood if I depends on how deep the cut might might be you know i of course you know get a little lightheaded and stuff like that but like it is really cool seeing blood from you know other people like not in like a weird way but like if you're watching like a wrestling match like when randy orton got his head sliced open by brock lesnar a few years ago i was like oh my god this is so cool like when you see stuff like that yeah like i said i don't like my own blood but you know like if i'm in a match where it comes that i have to steal blood i'm looking to spill it like i'm just crazy like that i I will give it, like, you know, and then that, they didn't ask for it, all right, you know what, I'm going to give it to you anyway. But I don't like, but like I said, when it comes to, you know, wrestling, I make those sacrifices, even though I don't like my blood, but if it comes to the point where it, I need to, you know, show some blood, I'm going to do it, because, you know, that's part of my gimmick. I'm fucking, I'm crazy, so let's go, let's do for it, I'm all for it. <laughs> exactly, and, like, the funny thing, too, is, like, you, um, you know, mention like the purge and all. I'm also super into horror movies. Like I go to horror conventions and everything like that. I, you know, I saw the first purge movie, but never the, I know there was like a sequel or two and then like a TV show. I never got into any of that. I saw that there was a TV show. I actually, I've not actually sat and watched it because I feel like that, you know, they really should have made a TV show because the movies were so good as is. And I feel like, you know, if I watch the TV show, I'm not, it's not going to be as good as the movies. So I will stick with the movies and I will let the TV show go do its thing. I do not want to watch the TV show. <laughs> See, like, I wanted... I've had people be like, hey, you're getting based off of this. You should watch the TV show. And I'm like, you know, the preview looks good, but when it's come to find out it was a TV series, I don't know if I could do it. Because, I mean, there was just so much that happened within the other, within the three movies of the first itself. It's hard to put that in a TV show. Like, how can you beat all the shit that happened in the movies in a TV show that might only be around for one season? There's just, like, there's no point. Yeah, I've seen that happen before where they, like, make a TV show out of, like, maybe, like, a movie or something like that. And it just doesn't end up being that good, and it's, like, a season or two. Like, I remember I got really hyped when The Terminator had a TV show, like, 15, 20 years ago-ish. And 
It only had two seasons. I actually enjoyed the show, though, but yeah, apparently a lot of other people didn't if it only lasted two seasons. But yeah, I, I definitely can understand, you know. A lot of people just yeah. make the movies to stand as their own, and they, you know, they just don't want anything else to ruin it. I totally understand that. Gotcha, yeah. I said, I don't know, like, as far as that TV goes, shows, I don't know if I can give it a chance. And normally I'm really good about watching, you know, new TV shows, because that's all I do. Like, if I'm not wrestling, watching my footage or catching up with other wrestlers, you know, just watching wrestling and, and basic, I'm always watching something on TV. It's just, I don't know if I have it in me to give the first a chance. <laughs> I mean, it, like I said, if it, if you just don't want to do it, I totally understand it because, you know, sometimes when you really enjoy something so much and then you, t you know, see it in a different, you know, form and you don't like it, it kind of, you know, waters it oh, down yeah. a bit and you don't want to do that. Kind of like, um, I'm trying to think of a, you know, I guess I could use the Terminator as a good excuse. Like the first two movies were fantastic. The third one I actually did like, it just obviously wasn't as good as the prequel. But then you had, you know, Salvation, which sucked. And then um, the most recent one, I forgot what that was called. It was, I know there's two other sequels. I haven't even seen the most recent one, but it, it started kind of going down. <laughs> and you're kind of like, uh, you know, that franchise right, right. I loved so much. You know, it's just coming out with these crappy movies now and stuff like that. So I, I totally understand. Yes, for sure, for sure. So now I have to ask, you said you were grandfathered into the business. So when you were younger and all, was that something that you wanted to do? Did you feel like you were forced to do it or, you know, how that went? Um, when I was younger, I definitely, I mean, I was seven when I, when I first got into wrestling. So um, I'm seven years old watching wrestling for the first time. I have no idea what's going on. I really was like... I cried a lot watching my dad get beat up because I thought that, you know, like, oh, my God, something is wrong with my dad. Like, I didn't understand the concept of wrestling. I mean, I'm seven years old, just the first time I've ever watched wrestling. Like, it's ever been brought into my life at all. And I had no idea what was going on. And then eventually, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I was doing more around it a lot more. And by the time that I turned to um, I was like, you know what, this is something I want to do. This is something um, I can see myself doing. You know, it looks, it looks challenging, but I was also a visual learner. So I would go every weekend, you know, my job to rush two, three days out of the week, and I'd go to every show. And by the time I turned 16, um, I was like, you know, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. And so that was it. I, I'm 16. I said, put it in the ring for the first time in my life. I had my train, did my training, got that out of the way, and then uh, by the time I was um, like 17, about to turn 18, I had my first match. So it was definitely very exciting. Um, uh, and not soon after that, my dad ended up retiring, and he pretty much welcomed me into the business or the spot being called, and. I was pretty much a fan at the time, you know, I was sitting in the crowd or whatever, and he came out to me, we did our little spot, and he was like, welcome to the business, and I was like, all right, let's go, so, like, that was pretty exciting, but yeah, like I said, I've been watching wrestling since I was seven, so, um, I you know, I watched all the old, when Eddie Guerrero was around, you know, like, uh, back in the day, when, before, you know, Shane McMahon, you know, started his own little thing and got all big or whatever, he was on the sidelines, never really set foot in the ring. And so, you know, like, I mean, I even remember at one point watching um, Melina wrestle. And she was, um, it used to be, the ones I looked up to during that time was Melina, Trish Stratus, Lita, and, um, Kelly Kelly. So those were those were my those were my favorite wrestlers growing up, and they they were the ones that I would constantly watch and get inspired to be able to do this. So when I turned 16, you know, my dad signed off on the split, saying, you know, signing the waiver, signed off on it to be able to get in, get my training going and whatever. And so from there, it's just been history. It's definitely been a, a roller coaster. I have yet to be able to wrestle my dad, but I have told him, I said, 
uh, when the time comes, I do want to work you in the ring because, you know, you're the main reason why I got into wrestling. I'm watching you to show you that I can hang with the big guys and show you how much I learned and that I got this and that it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's just like a match that has to happen, you know, like it, it's, you know, putting over, you know, sure, the, yes. the sibling and stuff like that. Like, I'm still waiting to see like a Rey Mysterio and a Dominic Mysterio match. Like, I did those types of matches, you know, just like need to happen you yeah. know, and all that. But like when you had mentioned, you know, watching your dad wrestle when you were younger and you were crying, you know, seeing him getting beat up. I think, you know, that's a very common thing. Like kids, when we're young, we think it's real. You know, we think that these characters are real. Like, I grew up watching right. the 90s, and I thought Undertaker was literally, like, the most evil person in the world, and I was frightened of him and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> you don't realize, like, how realistic this is, because no one really sits there and explains it to you. And even though my mom would say, oh, it's fake, they're not really doing something. Like, yes, they are. Like, look at that and all that. But, I mean, realistically, they, you know, y'all really are slamming each other jumping on each other all that kind of stuff so it 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 it, it oh, is yeah. real it's just you know the, obviously the matches are choreographed and um you know scripted and all that kind of stuff but it is a lot of physical pain so that that being said like when you actually started training and wrestling and all that was it what you expected or you know how'd that go Um, when I first started training, it was definitely different, um, because, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was, like, very, very nervous at first, because, you know, they explained to me, look, you know I mean, it's not, it's not all, you know, you're pumping on pretty much, you know, hardwood, you, you might have a thin piece of comfort, but you still don't feel it, you know, at the end of the day. Um, it was definitely very, very challenging, I mean, um, they definitely put me through the ringer plenty of times, you know, to make sure, like, this is where I wanted. I remember one point during training, they were like, all right, either you're going to be okay or I'm going to make you throw up at the end of this training session. And that is exactly what happened. I had threw up at the end of it, but I came back the next day and still put some more work in. Um, it's definitely different. The training is definitely different than what you see, like, you know, when you're actually at a show watching the show. There's a lot of shit um, that goes into the training session because there's so much you have to learn as a wrestler. Ring awareness is definitely one of the biggest things. And sometimes it's my problem because I can be placed somewhere in the ring and forget what, the, what I'm doing and how to, you know, re replace myself. So, I mean... There's still a bunch of stuff I have to work on because I have, you know, uh, Saturday was the first time I actually stepped in the ring after and took my first bump since COVID. So um, that was, there's definitely still a lot that I have to work out as far as, you know, to be better and progress more in the business. But um, going back to training, it wasn't what I was expecting at first but I grew to understand why I had to go about the process I had to during training. Um, because now that I've been in it over five, almost six years, uh, I see, okay, they, they were showing me this stuff, so that way in case it happens um, some, at some point in my career, I know, you know, what to do. Um, it was definitely different, but I did enjoy it because it was like, all right, and made me realize this is what I want to do. Let's do it. Let's get this money, man. <laughs> exactly and like a lot of people who you know are either just getting into the business or aren't just in the business period don't realize how tough it is to be a professional wrestler in the training like it's like boot camp from what I hear basically just like the amount of time you know all the bumps and everything they need to take and it's it's a lot, you know, more challenging than getting into like a, you know, a sport like football or baseball because you don't have, you know, a wrestling like kind of like coach or class in school. You know, you have to kind of venture. Right, you're, you're extremely right. Yeah, you don't have when you first start. You don't have the one specific person that works with you. You're you're in a group of a whole bunch of newbies. And you're pretty much trying to work with each other to get everything done. So it's not that you got one-on-one -on -one time with one specific coach or one specific, you know, wrestler. It's you're, you've got maybe like 
four or five five of you that are learning all these different drills and doing all this. And if you wanted that one-on-one -on -one time, it would normally be at a show, you get there early, and then you can work with other wrestlers that are there. But, yeah, it's never you have one specific coach. It's always you're working together as a team to get these drills out, learn how to do these moves, and it's a pretty much you're helping each other, you know, as far as wrestling goes. It's all about helping each other learn in this business, for sure. Exactly. Like teamwork's really key. Like I know some people get really competitive and they're always trying to climb over other people, but that's just not the good way to work. Cause you, when you're wrestling, even with your opponents, like you have to work with your opponents to put together a good match. If you know, the one's not working with the other or not selling their moves properly, it's just going to come off as a bad match and you know, it's going to make you look bad. So like, it's definitely a very important to stick together, even though it's typically, you know, your, your own individual contractors, you're not technically on the team, unless you're like on a tag team or faction kind of thing. But yeah, you right. technically should be working together. That's what a lot of wrestlers do. And there's a lot of promotions that I heard out there. There's like, they're like family, you know, like, and, and I really like that. Like I've heard a lot of good things about specific promotions and it seems like they, they everyone cares about each other. They want to, they want to just put together a good show and that's how it always should be, honestly. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I said, I had, uh, during my training process, I had like four different people, you know, help me with a bunch of different things. So it's not, just one person that was helping me with anything. It was these four different wrestlers that have been in the business uh, longer than I have show me the ropes type deal. So, but yeah, for sure. It's definitely, like I said, man, it's definitely not something that you would expect, but it has to be done if this is something you're serious about because it is, it's very, it can get very, very tiring mentally and physically. So if you can't handle, you know, the physically, the physical part aspect of it all, then you should have a mental capacity, a mental aspect of wrestling down, no problem. But it's definitely, it puts, it puts your mental and physical capacity to work, I see saying that, that much. Because I, I mean, still to this day, I get nervous before every match, you know, and they always say, if you don't get nervous before a match, then your heart is just not in it. But I tell you, my nerves go up every time. The matches start going, and get close to the meeting, lots of wrestling, my nerves just get my nerves keep building up, but at the end of the day, we knew it's all about putting on your best show. Exactly, and that kind of reminds me. When I was younger. I, I used to play baseball, and I loved it. And I would always get nervous before every game, like the good kind of nervous. But then, as yeah. I got to my final year, I just I wasn't nervous anymore. I didn't care, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this after this year, you know, kind of thing. So, like, I totally know that feeling, and I understand, you know, what it means. So um, now my next question for you, um, are there any specific opponents out there that you have your eye on that you would like to wrestle like indie wise and then, you know, like WWE wise? Oh man. Um, Savannah as a wrestler, she's just so good. I watched a lot of her work. I definitely would like to be able to step foot in the ring with her one day. I think she would be a really good challenge for me. Uh, as far as size goes, like, um, she's extremely tall. But, you know, I think that that is definitely one challenge I would like to have in front of me to be able to see if I can hold my end with her in the ring because she's a really good coach. Um, I would like to say, uh, Shaza McKenzie, I don't know if you know who she is. I think she just went to NXT not too long ago. I might be mistaken. Last I heard, she was. Um, but I'd like to be able to face her at one point. I also, before the, the Bella Twins were tired, I know this is probably every girl, young girl dream saying, but I would have loved to step in the ring with both of the Bella Twins because they have been in it for so long. And, you know, that would be a crazy experience to be able to get in there with them. Um, as far as, let's see, um, Ember Moon is, a, is another one of them. I think she might have changed her name. I'm not 100% sure. I know she's done a, she's done a new gimmick. I haven't really been watching NXT and stuff like that because uh, I've been busy with a bunch of other, trying to get a bunch of other shit around here close to me lined up. But um, I've watched a lot of Ember Moon back even before she was signed when she was Athena. Um, I definitely would like to work with her at point in time um if the time ever comes to definitely be able to step in the ring with her for sure 
And that's actually funny that you mentioned Ember Moon because I'm a huge fan of hers. And that's actually her finisher inspired the name of the podcast because it used to be called O-Face before it was Eclipse. So that's actually where I got my name from for the show. Yeah, I've always wanted to myself I was gonna learn how to do the eclipse because I thought her finish was awesome but I was meant to it to my own abbreviation but I just cannot get that 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 like I cannot get the damn turn that she does in midair while she's jumping I just can't rotate enough to be able to get that eclipse so I'm gonna have to figure something out man it looks challenging. Like, it's not even just doing a flip. It's, like, being timing, like, be you know, being able to get, the, you know, the stunner part or whatever it's called at the at that exact moment. Like, I'm not a high flyer. I try to avoid the top rope at all possible because when I get on the top rope, I get really nervous because I'm afraid of heights. And, and when you're in a ring, being on that top rope, it can get scary the much on that top rope. So... I definitely try to avoid that top rope as, as all possible. If I'm jumping off the rope, I'm going to jump off the second and make it look just as pretty as I'm jumping off the top rope. But, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm definitely – it's hard to get that eclipse done because I have tried it. It's just – I don't know how she does it. I mean, I, if she rotates in midair, it's like just perfect to be able to come down, like you said, in that center. So I'm going to have to figure something out, man. Because I love her fitness so much. I mean, practice makes perfect at the end of the day. Like, you just have to figure out. I mean, I me mean, not being, being a wrestler, I don't know exactly how you would figure it out. But I'm assuming, like, there's more to it than just kind of the athleticism part. You know, like I said, it, it's the time and concentration, stuff like that. But I'm sure if you really, like, practice, I'm sure you can get it down. I mean, she at one point didn't know how to do it either. And look at her now, so. Right, yep, for sure, for sure. So now my final question that I have for you, obviously we are now in 2021, so what are some of your wrestling goals for this year? Um, some of my wrestling goals for this year is definitely first is to, you know, get my name out there, you know, um, let people know who Riley Jane, which is my wrestling name, who she is and what she can bring to the table. Um, that's COVID took a lot of that off of last year. I'm hoping at some point, you know, soon we get the okay that, you know, wrestling promotions can start bringing back and kind of imagine bringing it back because, you know, that's uh, my main goal is to be able to be able to travel out of Tennessee and, you know, travel to different states and be able to get my name out there for different wrestling uh, companies. I have uh, quite a few right now who are looking looking at me, you know, in Michigan and Texas and and Arkansas, I believe. So, I mean, I've got a few companies that are reaching out to me that are meeting more female talent as they're trying to get their women's division on the rise. So, I mean, that's a very huge opportunity for me as well. Um, and I also, you know, just see how well this new kid for me rolls over and gets over with the crowd as far as when it when I debuted in, in April. So, so, I mean, it gives me like two months to get it together, you know, and I'm really excited to see, you know, um, it'd be really cool to start seeing, you know, my name on flyers for like really big shows with big names, you know, like stars that have been on AEW that are taking other bookings with a bunch of other indie companies, you know, that would be a very huge opportunity, like, that would be a very huge opportunity, you know, if I can finally, you know, keep my name out there and be on flyers with all these other big names, so that would be pretty awesome for me as far as my wrestling career goes. That is um, my goal. I'm also getting back in the gym, trying to kind of a little bit so I can get my stamina up and get get that out of, get that under control because right now it is pretty crazy. It is not the best. So I'm definitely, you know, trying to work on that. And, uh, you know, I'm also, I uh, would like to go to London at one point and wrestle for a couple of companies in the UK. I've looked up um, a lot of the companies in the UK and their women's division is getting really, really big. So um, hopefully if I can get enough, um, resumes or resumes. If I can get enough matches under my belt and uh, some more seminars, I've been to quite a few with some big names, but I want to get at least a little bit more seminars under my belt 
So that way, when I put together my resume and try to send it over, you know, to like the UK or stuff like that, um, it'll get noticed than if I didn't have any big names or not as many seminars or stuff like that. So that's my goal is to hopefully, you know, I at least want to wrestle in London one time. I've never been to the UK, so that would be an that would be an awesome opportunity if that ever comes my way this year. But that is definitely my goal is to at least say that I've wrestled in every state once. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like every state has a wrestling promotion. That's something I didn't know until I really got into the Indies. I'm like, wow, like there's all these promotions in DC and New York and New Jersey, and I'm like, wow, like Indies wrestling is so huge. So, I I definitely like will do my best to help you get your name out there as much as possible. You know, to help you accomplish your goals. And I'm sure the UK thing will definitely happen. Um, you just you know sometimes it just takes time, but hopefully sooner rather than later. You know. Right, for sure. So, um, uh, Elizabeth, so that wraps up our interview. So I have to thank you so much for joining us today on O-Face Wrestling. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I do want to say this before I go. There's um, a new company, or not semi-new, but um, it's called No Limit Pro. And it's here in Nashville, Tennessee. Their, um, their face is in April is the debut of the women's division Empress Wrestling. So if you, you know, get in contact with any other female wrestlers that would be interested, um, keep planning on getting a bunch of footage together and sending it out during that show to a bunch of big name companies. Um, so if you come in contact with any female wrestlers that would be interested in an opportunity to get their name, like to ROW or R -O Ring of Honor, sorry, ROW, what am I saying? Um, bring them on or, you know, impact stuff like that, definitely shoot them, uh, shoot me a message and we can get it started. Since you're helping me, I'd like to help other female wrestlers out there that are looking for a chance to get their name out there and have a chance to appear on TV and stuff like that. So, um, definitely let me know. And I'm so excited you have me here. Like I said, this is my first, so I hope I didn't do too bad. Um, and I would love to definitely do this again uh, sometime, maybe um, in the near future. It would be awesome to do this again with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm always down for follow-up interviews. It doesn't have to be like a certain amount of time, you know, like some people might like prefer like a year down the road, but it, it doesn't matter. It could be like two months down the road. I'm always like, I never say no to an interview. Like, you know, like I said, I, I want to do my best to help you all get your name out there. And if, you know, follow-up interviews, sharing your stuff on social media, like I do like the best I can, you know, to help you all out. And as far as like that promotion and all, if I, you know, I'll definitely like post about it on our social media to it and see if because I, I do have a lot of indie wrestlers who follow us on social media so they'll definitely see it and you know we'll see what happens awesome yeah next the next interview you never know i might have my ear just pop up full blown and gimmick mode for you that would be awesome i would definitely love that so, awesome. do you want to let all the listeners know where to find you on social media um, yeah, so my Facebook page is Elizabeth Marie, and I also have a fan page called Riley J. My Instagram is at Lizzie, L-I-Z-Z-Y, M-A-R-I-E, 1996, and that is the same for my Twitter. And all of those are in the bio, everyone. So if you want to go give her a follow on, you know, all the social media platforms and also make sure you give us a sub on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And um, thank you all for listening. And thank you so much again, Elizabeth, for joining us today on O-Face Wrestling. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.